here I have two patterns. I will put the link for these patterns online. Okay, so here I am at my ironing board and we're going to just have my fabric folded like this. And so that it's not wrinkled and I'm making sure my cut is even and good, I am going to iron it, okay? And you see I have the wrong sides together here. I have the outsides of the fabric here. So I'm gonna, since I have it folded like this down, I will put my pattern just like this. You can see, I'm gonna line it up. And then I'm going to get my good fabric scissors and cut all along. I have my pieces cut. I'm just gonna line it back up and see how this is. There we go, okay. I have two pieces of fabric now. These are gonna get sewn together and that will be the front of the mask, okay? Once they're sewn together. These pieces together, you're gonna put right sides together and you'll have your outsides, okay? Then you can pin this so that they don't get separated and you'll just run your sewing machine right along the edge, about a fourth, quarter of a, an inch. Okay, so I did this. I cut my main fabric, which is my outside, what you're gonna see when I put it on my face. Um, then I will get the second part to the template and it's cut to for the lining fabric. So the lining fabric is going to be the inside. And so I decided I wanted green polka dot to go on the inside of this pink with the leaves. This is the interfacing that I'm going to use to put inside of the mask. This is gonna provide an extra barrier. It's breathable, it's a little bit on the thick side, but it's not heavy. But we're gonna put this in between the two cotton layers. So this is gonna go in the middle of your front and back of your mask, okay? So for this, I'm actually going to cut this white edge off where you see the blue line, and this is what I'm gonna cut with my interfacing. I have all three of these cut. You're gonna take each one and flip them right sides in, wrong sides out. So just line them up like this. There's one, so it's wrong sides, right side on the inside. Okay, so here is my sewing machine. I have plugged in my foot, which is the pedal here. You can see down there, the pedal. You push this to make the needle go up and down in the fabric when you wanna sew, just gently till it goes to the speed you want it. I'm gonna have my power cord plugged in here. I have my thread put on right there, and you can see, and it shows you how to thread it. So I'll bring it here on the hook and then around this, which I did. And then if I'm just threading it, I follow the dark line. If I want to put it on a bobbin, this is the bobbin right here. So not all sewing machines have this, but um, I'll say in this compartment, you have different ways of putting them in. Anyways, that's your bobbin. And so you have to put thread on that and that's the dash line up here. And your bobbin would stick on top of this and you would put a string around it and then clip it over. Turn on your sewing machine, which is usually a little clip over here. And then you would press the foot and this thing will spin thread the color you want, which right now I'm having gray. Um, but you would thread it until it fills up. And then that puts your thread on the bobbin, is what that little piece is called. And then it goes down in here. And then you usually have an image, like here, it shows you that the string needs to come counterclockwise. 
and then through. So I put it in and then I thread it under here, around and pulled it and it clipped off because there's a little tiny razor right there. Okay, and then I put my cap on. And back up here, we're gonna go focus. Okay, I pull my string through that little tab then through here. Then you see I have numbers on here. Right here, two, it goes down and around. Right there, it shows you number three. Then you go up, and in there is the little foot. I will lift it. Do you see it moving in there? There we go. It's moving in there. So you'll put your string in around it and then pull it down here. Then you put your string under this little thing, so you pull it down. And when you're holding your string right here, you are going to push this down and it will go over and grab your string. And then when you let it go, it pulls it through the needle and then you would just pull it out to the side. Now you want to put your thread down in the foot. This is called your foot right here. So you'll put it down and pull it back. Just like that, okay? So then you would turn on your machine, just like that. It just got ready, okay? So here are my mask pieces that I flipped with the right sides together and wrong sides out. Now, if you wanted to, if they don't stay together really well, mine are staying together pretty good. But if they don't stay together really well, then you can take pins and stick in there horizontally to keep your fabric from moving around and not having it lined up correctly, you will wanna poke in and make sure that you get both layers. Poke your needle through, let's see, like this, okay? And then you'll poke it through again. So you're gonna bend your fabric over, a little and poke your needle through so then you have it just like that so you, you could go along and do three or four of them but so that you know your fabric is not moving around as you're sewing it'll stay lined up together so that you're making sure you have your fabric on both sides when you're sewing we're gonna take it over here so I don't want all my fabric coming in so I'm actually gonna flip it over here. I cannot see my needles now because I already did it, but here we go. Flip the fabric over here. So I have the bottom of the mask and this is the top of the mask. This is gonna be the middle of the face mask. So I'm gonna place it in here. There's a little lever right here. You just plop it down. Once you have your fabric where you want it to go, right here, you see? And you're gonna flip this little lever down And did you see the foot just dropped right there onto your fabric so you can see. Now, there's a wheel on the side of your sewing machine. If you rotate this wheel forwards or backwards, your needle will lift up. So I'm gonna roll it and you can see my needle. Let me focus. You see my needle's moving? So to make sure that my needle is going in where I want it to, I'm gonna roll it down to see if it's gonna touch my fabric or not and it is not touching my fabric. So I'm gonna lift my needle back up. I'm gonna lift my foot back up. And I'm gonna try again. So I'm gonna slide my fabric forward a little bit. And I wanna stay, right here is, let me zoom in here. It tells you how many inches, so 5 eighths of an inch if your fabric is hitting this line right here. I actually wanna do 1 fourth, which is over there. So. Basically, my fabric is going to line up right on this whole opening on the side here. Let's see. Right here. My whole opening right there is where I want my fabric to line up. So, I'm gonna put it in. I'm gonna drop the foot right here. There's the foot. Drop it. And we'll see that my foot lowered down onto the fabric. I'm gonna roll the needle down. Let's 
see that it is hitting my fabric. Okay. Now I can leave it if I want my needle to move over because I don't want it all the way on the side. I want it directly in the middle of my foot. So that is where all these little dials come in. So I have several different settings. There's three stitch, zigzag stitch. For this, I'm just gonna do number one because it's right in the middle. It does two stitch first and then single stitch after. So I'm gonna move over here to my screen. I'm gonna push the up button. And you'll see when I lift my needle, it adjusts over to the middle. I'm gonna zoom out so you guys can see what I'm doing here. I put one hand here. You do not wanna sew your fingers, so be safe about it. And then I'm gonna gently push my pedal. Now, I wanna back stitch. This little reverse button right here is gonna let me go back. Back stitching means I'm gonna hold it down and it's gonna go backwards where I just sewed. And then I'm gonna let it go when it goes back a couple of bobs back the needle pops in and out like two times then I'm gonna push my foot again again I'm holding my fabric to guide it I'm not pushing it I'm just going along with the fabric making sure it doesn't twist left or right that it stays straight where I want it to stay okay so we're gonna sew again and as you get close to the end of the other end you want to stop for a minute and you want to back stitch again. One, two, three. Okay, and then you just sew it off. Okay, once you've sewn through the fabric, you want to come over here to the side. You want to roll your needle up with the wheel. So you're going to push it away from you and the needle rolls up. Okay, then you're going to lift your foot and you're gonna pull out your mask, okay? Usually sewing machines come with this little tab on the side, that's actually like a razor. And you can just pull, make sure you get both of your threads there over it. Either way, you can pull it, quick, pull and it separates it. Then of course you would want to take out your needles and see what you did. Always clean up your edges. So when you have your strings hanging from where you started sewing and when you finish sewing, clip those off. So you don't want a lot of frayed strings hanging from your work. It makes it messy. Um, and those would be really annoying on a face mask. So then just open it up and pop it out and you'll see this is what your face mask is gonna look like. This will be your front of your face mask. I'm gonna lay it down so you can kind of see a little better. Do the same thing with the green polka dots and the same with your interfacing. So I flipped the mask right sides together, right here, as you can see. I put them together and then I lined up the top seams together. And so when you're sewing, you will want these open so that it lays flat together on the edge, okay? And I put pins in to hold the fabrics together when I'm sewing, okay? And then I lined up the seams on the bottom same thing and then I put pins in to hold them together so when I'm sewing my fabric's not gonna move and come apart and then it's all wonky so I did my pinning now I'm gonna sew okay I'm gonna sew on the top and leave both sides open so we can flip it right side out and then I'm gonna sew the bottom okay again you'll set it up in your sewing machine Okay, so you'll see that I got my sewing done. Here is my thread going through. So whenever I went to push these through in the sewing machine, I made sure that both sides, 
the seams were open. I did the top and I did it along the bottom. Same thing, made sure both sides, the seam was open from the middles. Okay, there we go. And then now, I did not sew the sides at all together, okay? So, we'll wanna clip our threads. Let me do that. Okay, threads are clipped on the ends. There's no free threads hanging from where I sewed. So now we are gonna flip our mask right side out. And at this point, it would be super helpful to iron the edges so that it lays down. I'm actually gonna do that once I put the interfacing in there. Inside and flipped over, and this is the front of our mask right there. I love the pink and greens. Okay, so once you have it flipped out, you want to take your interfacing So curved, curved. Interfacing is curved this way. Okay, so you just slide this in through your opening and line it up in there. Now you can play with it to get it completely lined up because you want your middle poking forward the same as your front. And just make sure it's lined up in there evenly. Have the interfacing stuck inside there as that extra protective layer. Okay, and now I'm actually gonna go to the ironing board and I'm gonna iron my edges because we are gonna sew a line around this. And you actually want to fold these ends in and iron them. You're gonna have a clean edge on your mask. So this is gonna give you a clean edge right here. We're gonna go iron this so that it's crisp edges and it doesn't want to flop out on you when you go to sew it. Okay, so now you can see that I went through and ironed this. I just folded the ends in and ironed it. I ironed the edges so that it's lined up so I can take this mask and sew the entire edge around the mask. But first, I'm gonna stick my elastic in the ends. I just took this elastic here it's like a big pack of elastic, one long, super long string. And these may be a little long, but I didn't want to make them too tight. So, they are about almost six inches. Just gonna take them and tuck them in the ends here. So one end over here and then you're gonna take it, say it would be wrapped around the ear like that. And you're gonna tuck this end. And so you want to sew the mask with these on each end here. You can pin these so that they stay in place. So all the way around without lifting up my needle and I'll just turn. I'll show you how to do a turn too. So I'm gonna sew all the way around the edge. I backstitched. You're gonna wanna go over your elastic a few times so that you are reinforcing it so they can't pop it out of the mask accidentally. So then I'm gonna backstitch. I'm gonna hold my backstitch button and go back over again two times. So I already went over once, that was two times, and now I'm just gonna sew straight. 
So while you're sewing, you kind of want to keep it as close to the edge as you can. Close up your ends while you sew. And see, I'm going over this again. So I'm going to back stitch and go back over the elastic for a second time. And then I'm going to sew it the third time. Okay, and when you come to a corner, keep your needle in. Do not roll up your foot here. Don't roll the foot up. Leave your needle in, and you're just gonna lift your foot, and when you lift your foot, you turn your fabric. Then lower your foot. You want your needle to stay in so that it picks up exactly where you left off when you were sewing. you will see that I sewed all the way around the edges, double stitching over the elastic ties just to make sure they don't pull. Right there you can see, I went all the way around the whole mask and then met back to my starting location which was right here. And when we zoom in you'll see I did not cut my strings yet, but we'll flip it over and make sure I didn't go off on any edges on the other side which looks pretty good. Okay, so now I'm just gonna take my scissors and snip off these and then we have a completed mask that you can put on your face and it is really cute. I really like this, this pattern.